it just felt bad. Like, even after we won game one, I just, I was, I was trying to be happy, but I was also so, you know, worried internally. Like, um, um, as I said, I just, I don't want to feel this feeling again. And, um, It'll make me a lot better. In 2023, Josh Giddy averaged 15 both on and off the court. The young man got himself caught up in a drama that seems to have taken a toll on his career. This year's playoffs have been nothing but disappointment for Giddy, resulting in a huge drop in both points and minutes. However, one bad year wouldn't mean anything for such a young player if it wasn't for other circumstances that could end his time with the OKC Thunder. There are a couple of strong reasons why OKC might be actually done with Josh Giddy, and today, we'll go through them all. Hello again, basketball fans, and welcome back to Hoop Vision. As you probably know, back in 2023, someone on social media had accused Josh Giddy of having an improper relationship with a minor. Allegedly, Josh was in a relationship with a girl who was under the age of 18, which would have been terrible if he hadn't been 19 at the time. Also, the unofficial version of the story is that the girl had a fake ID at the time of them meeting, which caused Josh to think she was 19 years old. Since she was allowed access to the club, Giddy had no reason to doubt her age at all. If we're being realistic, the fact that a 19-year-old guy was with a 16-year-old girl should not be news, especially considering that she had recorded countless TikTok clips in which she bragged about her achievement of hooking up with an NBA player. There is no question that there was consent from both parties involved, so the whole drama is nothing more than a media story pumped up for headlines due to the fact that Giddy is a professional athlete. If Josh was working any other regular job, none of this would be news at all. Fortunately, the court epilogue of this drama ended with the police suspending the investigation due to lack of evidence of any criminal activity on the part of Giddy. No surprise there. Does this guy look like a sex offender to you? Unfortunately for them, NBA players are not immune to problems that come with fame one of them being relationships with women and sexual allegations. If you remember, many famous athletes faced similar situations. Kobe Bryant was accused of rape in 2003, but the case was dismissed because the girl refused to testify. Mike Tyson served three years in prison for rape conviction. According to the victim's story, she managed to defend herself from him for about 30 minutes. But after that, she lost her strength and Mike took advantage of it. What everyone complains about is his lawyers. In addition to the terrible defense they gave him is that they didn't point out the one one biggest flaw of that story. Heavyweight champions couldn't keep him off of them for 30 seconds, but this girl was able to do it for 30 minutes? Sounds kind of suspicious, but we weren't there, so we don't have a dog in that fight. No pun intended. Even Cristiano Ronaldo was accused of rape and linked to various women, but everything points to the fact that these were only attempts to extort money from the global soccer superstar. As you can see from these examples, there is a lot of illogicality that accompanies such cases, primarily because professional athletes have much more to lose by committing an act of rape or essay, so it is not entirely clear why they would do it, especially considering the number of options they have available when it comes to women. Wilt Chamberlain allegedly slept with over 20,000 women. Dennis Rodman's life was more or less a Las Vegas strip show, and even today's players are known for bad choices of their multiple baby mamas precisely because they get a lot of DMs from a lot of attractive girls. Fortunately, Josh didn't suffer any legal consequences. And aside from booze at games on the road, his career didn't suffer in that sense. The NBA did not impose any kind of suspension on him, and his teammates and the franchise approached the whole situation by giving him a lot of support. However, the psychological impact of all this was more than obvious. Josh lost the consistency he had before the incident and was no longer his old self despite some good games. For example, the series against the Pelicans was marked by his good shooting for three points. Giddy with 50% beyond the arc significantly contributed to the first sweep of this young roster. However, against Dallas, the story was the complete opposite. Only 12 minutes and six points per game in a series that was decisive for the season. Not exactly what we expected if I remember his role from the recent past. Giddy was the sixth pick in the draft and one of the core players of the young Thunder roster. So what happened? Giddy simply allowed the Mavs to close the paint by awfully starting the series missing open three-pointers. Instead of giving some valuable spacing to the team, he gave Gafford and Lively the opportunity to ease the pressure on the perimeter and strengthen the defense on Holmgren. The coach realized what was happening and made an adjustment, which meant Giddy's trip to the bench. This might not be such a problem for Josh if OKC was not in a specific situation. They are title contenders right now. We don't often see a team that started rebuilding only four years ago is already playing on a first 
first seed in the Western Conference playoff level. How did this affect Giddy? Well, since the title doesn't seem that far off, the franchise might lose patience much earlier than it usually would. Aside from his bad streak, Josh is a very valuable trade asset that, so combining him with a couple of first round picks OKC has to spare, could bring in a superstar and significantly push them forward in the race for the West. His current market value is at its lowest point, so he'll probably be safe this summer, but his fate will depend on how he plays next season. If he doesn't show up, he'll be 99% gone before the deadline. Would OKC give up Giddy to win the title? Absolutely. He wouldn't clear out much cap space for them as his next season will bring him in around $8 million, but re-signing him after the 2024 and 25 season would cost the Thunder even more. That's why, if he doesn't show some improvement, they're more than probably done with him. At first glance, San Antonio would be a perfect home for Josh given his elite passing skills. Throwing lobs to Wemby would be an ideal opportunity for him to develop his point forward style of play without too much pressure on the outcome. Of course, the Trey Young rumors would certainly have a lot of influence on whether this trade would happen. Although it's not impossible that if they want, the Spurs can bring both of them. San Antonio also has a lot of first round picks and an enormous salary cap space, so they will surely work on acquiring the deepest roster possible around Wemby and go after the championships once they feel they are ready. The Phoenix Suns would also get a lot with the arrival of Josh Giddy on the team, but unfortunately, they don't have any trade assets. All picks went to current stars, and Kevin Durant's situation doesn't seem to be improving, so they are a very unlikely option. However, although it seems crazy out of this world, imagine how cool it would be if KD wanted to come back to the OKC Thunder for one last title run, playing a support role for Shea, Holmgren, and the rest of their young core. There would literally be no better redemption story arc in the entire NBA. Unfortunately, the chances of that happening are the same as Rudy Gobert becoming a three-point shooter, so we'll leave this fairy tale scenario right here. As far as Giddy is concerned, the other two teams that would be good fits for him are the Nets and Orlando Magic. Both are young and focused on building up in the next five years, whereas the Magic have so much cap space they could easily sign Paul George to a max contract. It's hard to say whether they'd be willing to shake things up with Josh, but he doesn't sound like a bad addition when you take a look at their rosters. However, there's also another option. What if Josh Giddy stays with OKC? What if this was just another bump in the road and the Thunder come back even better and stronger without sacrificing any pieces of their young core? This would mean Giddy would have to step up his three-point game not just in terms of percentages, but consistency as well. He's a 31% three-point shooter, which is not enough if he wants to be a key piece on a contending team. If he added the shooting at being 6 foot 8 inches tall, imagine how much he'd stretch the floor for OKC. Shea's mid-range game would flourish even more. He'd be having so many options to abuse defenders. A 40% beyond the arc giddy would mean no help on Shea when he slashes through the lane, so it's more than obvious what the result of that would be most of the time. It would also mean the world to OKC if Giddy would work on his off-the-ball game. Since he needs the ball to be productive, he should study Ray Allen, Reggie Miller, Kyle Korver, and all the other 3 and D players who utilize screens and off-ball movement to make themselves invaluable to their teams. If Josh did all these things and improved his overall skills, the only problem OKC would have would be about paying so much young talent. But those are good problems to worry about as opposed to how to get rid of a deteriorating player with drama surrounding him. This OKC roster has so much potential as their average age is only 24. This gives them enough time to develop and maybe go beyond the second round next season. When it comes to Giddy, he'll determine his fate in the months to come. If he comes back mentally stronger and more mature, who knows what kind of player he could become for Oklahoma. Until then, he should focus on all the support he gets, because all the hate is neither beneficial nor deserved. That's it for today, dear friends. We hope you've enjoyed this video. Let us know in the comments below what you think of Josh Giddy's situation, and do you think he'll remain with the Thunder? Thank you for watching and growing this channel. Make sure you don't miss out on more NBA stories by hitting that subscribe button. And I'll see you in the next one.